With just over three weeks to go before France's presidential elections, today's Focus report looks at the appeal of the National Front in this year's Elysee race. Most opinion polls predict that Marine Le Pen will score well in the first round, but would lose against the centrist Emmanuel Macron in the second. But with thousands of voters still undecided, the outcome remains unpredictable. And more and more young people say they'll be ticking the far-right box on the ballot paper this spring. Fanny Allard and Josh Vardy have more in this report. Generation Identitaire, a far-right youth group, march in the streets of France's capital. Their voices are loud and their style divisive, even confrontational. The young people who join us are tired of the scum. They've had enough of the insecurity, enough of immigration. They don't want to become minorities in their own home. They don't want to be foreigners in their own country. At the moment, I'm going to vote for Le Pen, and I think everyone here will as well. Not long ago, most National Front supporters would be ashamed to admit it. But this year, sympathizers have been feeling more emboldened. An official National Front office has even been opened at the Parisian University Sciences Po. 19-year-old Juliette is canvassing outside without meeting any hostility. A year ago, she was a member of the far left. We were sold a caricature, but I saw the truth when I joined. I met people who weren't what I was expecting. They're not racist, they're not fascists, just normal people who love their country and who want to protect it. Every Wednesday, Juliette meets up with friends at the National Front Youth Headquarters for a debate event. This evening, Conservative candidate Francois Fillon's programme is under scrutiny. Here, young activists can share ideas and discuss the issues of the day, like how to get their parents to vote for the far right. My parents are anti-National Front. It was a shock for my mother when she found out. She's a part of the right that grew up knowing Jean-Marie Le Pen and who don't realize the social change and didn't go to public college. My parents are from the traditional right wing, but I'll manage to make them vote Marine like they voted Chirac and Sarkozy. These young people born in the 1990s don't remember when Jean-Marie Le Pen, Marine's father, was leading a more openly aggressive far-right movement. Juliette says she supports the less controversial aspects of the party. We talk a lot about real situations people find themselves in, particularly economic issues. I am entirely in agreement with those who are against the neoliberal politics of Fillon. Whoever is social, protectionist, and with preference towards the national, those are exactly my values. The National Front counts hundreds of young people amongst its supporters. On Facebook, they have more than 82,000 followers, far ahead of the young conservatives or socialists. In order to convince the wider electorate and normalize support for the party, the National Front has developed a fine-tuned PR campaign with striking imagery. You have a young couple in a small provincial town sitting on a bench, holding hands, and everything's fine. And next to it, there's this picture of suburban riots, cars burning, a miserable tramp in the foreground, and some hooded youths menacing the police in the background with the message, choose your France. This is true propaganda in line with the Identitaire movement. At National Front meetings, the first thing they say is to take photos, choose the best ones and put it as your Facebook profile. It's a way of giving off a good image. So all of your Facebook friends who aren't like you see your good mood and they see you're not one of the skinheads described by the media. Around 400 kilometers east of Paris and the Vosges, around 30% of the local young people are unemployed. 10% more than the national average. Benjamin is at the market of Remiremont, a town of almost 8,000 residents. He works seasonally in the surrounding ski resorts. Along with three other activists, 
they canvass weekly for the National Front in nearby villages. And they're welcomed by the majority of the people they meet. Everyone is for her. This candidate is different from the others. Yes, it's true. I'm happy we've been well received. We feel like politics on the left and right are distant from our needs. They don't understand how we live. The young people are affected by fear over their future, and they don't know what's going to happen. It's not the question over migration that affects me the most. Everyone has their own philosophy. But what I like is the idea of protectionism. Social sovereignist discourse. This working class region was hit hard by the deindustrialization policies of the 1990s. Now we're getting deep into the valley of the Vosges. Ramon Chalin's Benjamin's hometown. He wants to show off what's left of a textile factory, a remnant of a bygone era. He sees globalization as the main reason for the high local unemployment rate. There are still those holding on, but only just. It won't be long before it closes. It's not encouraging. I know loads of people here are unemployed. My friends from school, those who are at college with me, most of them are jobless. Many of these young people turn to the far right due to fears over their future. Just 10 years ago, this support would have been unimaginable, but it's helped put the National Front Party in the strongest position it's ever been. You can, of course, watch that focus report once again in full on our website. But now to discuss the pull of the far right here in France a little further, we can cross now live to Birmingham in the UK and speak to Jim Shields, an expert in all things French at Aston University. Mr Shields, thank you very much for being with us here once again on France 24. First of all, this election is the first time that many young people in France will be casting their ballots. Just why, in your view, are so many of them planning to vote Le Pen? Well, the motivations, as your package showed, actually, are varied. There's frustration at lack of jobs, poor economic prospects, problems of access to housing for young people, and a blocked society where opportunities for the young are woefully insufficient. And this is the case especially for young people with low educational qualifications. Le Pen is managing to harness a sense that 50 years of right and left wing government have resulted in relentlessly high unemployment, with a youth unemployment close to 25%, way above the EU average, twice the level of the UK and more than three times the level of Germany. And even among those young people who do have jobs, many eke out a precarious existence on short term contracts, so a long way from the job security enjoyed by an earlier generation. We heard in that report that to vote FN was once a huge sign of shame, but the party has somewhat changed its image. Is that what's making it more appealing? Or is it more that voters, young voters, are rejecting other parties? Well, this does matter. Um, another reason for FN support among the young is that they've no memory of the FN as a pariah party bringing together some of the most radical elements of the French extreme right. The version of the FN they know is the Republican version that Marine Le Pen has been sanitizing since she became leader in 2011, when an 18-year-old today would have been, what, just 12. Um, we should also say that there are plenty of young people who support the FN because they agree with its ideology, its anti-immigration, anti-Islamist platform. The Front National de la Jeunesse, the party's youth wing, has long been a very active and ideologically assertive component and a recruiting ground for later senior figures in the party. Mr Shields, is it fair to say that more and more young people will vote FN in this election as a one-off, or are they more likely to vote the far right once again in the future? I think we just don't know the answer to this question. What is striking is that the level of youth support for the FN right now, nearly 40% of 18 to 24 year olds in a recent EFOP survey goes against current trends. If you look at the UK, young people were mostly against Brexit and in defense of an open vision of the UK's place in Europe. Look at the US, 
Trump did poorly in attracting the youth vote. Yet in France, polls show the desire for change right now to be a key factor in youth support for Le Pen, a view that Le Pen is the candidate most likely to shake things up. And again, polls show that she draws most of her youth support from modest households, working class, lower middle class, where there's a clear economic dimension to that support. So unless the next five year period, the next presidency addresses some of those economic problems, we might expect support for the Front National to continue strong or even grow. And this poll by the FN to attract more young voters must surely be very worrying to other parties. What have other movements on both the right and the left of the political spectrum been doing to try and get young people to come back to their fold? Yes, this is, this is actually, it's all part of a bigger problem because the issue is not really uh, just young people uh, in growing numbers supporting Marine Le Pen and the FN. It's young people not being politically engaged. So you're absolutely right to say that across the spectrum, they are a target audience. If we look at the regional elections of December 2015, something like two thirds, over 60% of young people, 18 to 35 year olds, did not vote. Now, that's a huge constituency for Macron, Hamon, Mélenchon, Fillon, as well as for Le Pen. And as things stand at the moment, Le Pen is front running among the youngest voters. Macron comes next, uh, Hamon next. Mélenchon and Fillon don't really have much to say to the younger tranche of voters. But it's a, it's a battle right now between Le Pen, Macron, and to some degree, Hamon, to attract young voters. OK, Jim Shields, um, a professor in French politics and history at Aston University in Birmingham in the UK. Thank you very much for being with us here on France 24 this Monday. Time now for another quick break. I'm back with the latest headlines and more world news at the top of the hour. Do stay with us here on France 24.